Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Uh, welcome back to today's session, uh, where we will be discussing uh, another very important play by Vijay Tendulkar called Ghashiram Kotwal, right? Or the Constable Ghashiram. Ghashiram Kotwal, and in his very brief uh, introduction uh, and historical overview of the play, the theatre critic Shomik Bondopadhyay uh, describes the. Uh, historical uh, the reception the performance and reception of the play it was first uh, performed in uh, 1972 right at the bharatnatyam mandir in pune and ghashram kotwal won several awards uh, in 1972 uh, 73 at the maharashtra state drama competition but after 19 performances this play was uh, uh, banned uh, uh primarily on two uh, counts the first reason was that the play was objected to be anti brahmin and the second reason was that the main character of the play nana fadnavis was conceived by the playwright uh, as conceived by the playwright was not historically correct now what is the play about the play itself uh, is uh, about a man called uh, ghashram uh, who then becomes uh, the kotwal or the constable of pune and uh, the entire play is set in pune uh, and uh, the play focuses on uh, nana fadnavis who is the uh, cult uh, the cult hero of the play and he is himself the uh, deputy of the peshwa uh, he is the chancellor of the, in the of the peshwa in uh, pune in uh, the 17th Uh, century right so um it's uh, so uh, when people actually watch the play uh, many of them uh, criticize the play for not having a historically accurate representation of the uh, nana right? uh, and uh, the play itself even though it's set in a much earlier historical period of the maratha uh, empire um and uh, also the uh, brahmanical uh, hegemony that uh, ruled over pune and that supported was the major source of support for the uh, nana and the maratha empire uh, it's it's still the play still has a certain contemporary relevance it is still bears uh, relevance to uh, contemporary the corruption of contemporary politics so uh, if you look at the play there it is a very uh, if i had to provide you with a very broad overview of the play the play itself has to do with a man named ghashram who uh, comes uh, migrates to pune in search of work and he is himself uh, claims to be a brahmin from kanauj but the brahmins of pune do not refuse to accept him as part of them because they 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 have uh, they believe in the purity of the pune puneri brahmins and every other brahmin is seem to be uh, subordinate and uh, and foreign and he comes there in such of work and he accidentally uh, meets the nana when uh, the nana uh, you know falls accidentally trips and falls and uh, when he helps nana up the nana is very pleased and he gives gashram kotwal an a pearl necklace and uh, the other brahmins of pune resent gashram for this uh, uh recognition and they try to fight over the necklace and then they end up uh, humiliating and beating gashram up for which he decides to take revenge and he is made the uh, kotwal of pune by nana but then he does not end up being a very righteous ruler right he actually ends up uh, ill treating and mistreating the people of pune uh, he imposes a police state uh, a kind of complete totalitarian uh, regime where everyone is uh, controlled uh, even their thoughts are controlled they have absolutely no freedom whatsoever so uh, the and so and of course the play ends with uh, ghashram being beaten up and killed for his uh, tyranny 
right? So the entire play really is about the corruption, uh, the hollowness of political power and uh, the corruption uh, exhibited by this man who uh, ends up becoming as tyrannical as the powers that he initially began to uh, oppose. Right? The play in some sense also is about uh, the blurring of uh, ethical boundaries uh, that uh, towards the end uh, there is really no uh, difference between the perpetrator of violence and uh, the, the victim, right? I mean, so in this case uh, Ghashiram, right? So the play itself has a very large uh, cast uh, and this is primarily because the play drew a lot from uh, certain folk traditions of drama and uh, so uh, like you know many of the other playwrights of his time like uh, Girish Karnad. Uh, Tendulkar also drew a lot from local folk traditions and uh, this can be seen in the dance and song uh, uh, sequences and performances in the play where you have a large number of characters uh, who play Brahmin men who also very often uh, form a wall in the play. There is a wall in the play they, uh, they, and uh, very often the wall uh, you know, functions as a boundary or a partition on stage but uh, there are times when the actors uh, the, that compose the wall uh, step out of their, uh, their uh, position as a wall and they end up uh, performing a, a character or commenting on the action in the play. So uh, it's very interesting to see how uh, you know uh, in in this particular play, Tenulka draws a lot from folk traditions and uses uh, people as both props as well as uh, characters. Um, so. The play itself draws a lot from several folk traditions including the Kela, the Tashavatar, the Tamasha, uh, the Gondhal, the Bharud, the, the Bahurupi, the Vaghya Murli and so on. Right? So, uh, and then you also have another very important character who is the Sutradhar. Right? And this is of course a very interesting uh, traditional character that you find in folk drama. Uh, the Sutradhar or the narrator who very often interposes in the proceedings of the play to keep the audience abreast of what is happening. Right? So very often uh, the actors switch parts with perfect timing. Now this includes the actors who form the wall. This very often also includes the Sutradhar himself who is either a narrator or a character in the play. Right? So he, he, the Sutradhar or the narrator strings together as the name Sutradhar implies. He strings together the action of the play. He steps in and out of character. He keeps the play together. There's a touch of opera, this is Shomik Bandupadhyay's quote, uh, sorry, this is actually uh, a, a production note to the play where uh, he says that a touch of opera with verse, music and prose fusing into one another in a strange compelling alchemy. Right? The ballet blending with the traditional folk dances sets the mood and tempo of the decadent and body era. Right? So a lot of the play in fact has to be watched rather than just read. If you watch the play, especially if you, if you went online and you, uh, there are a couple of productions of uh, Ghashram Kotwal on YouTube where you can actually see, uh, you, can in, you can visualize and imagine the ways in which these characters have dressed up, the way they perform, the way they, uh, they form the wall or they form uh, props on one hand and on the other also uh, assume uh, characters who come and comment on the action of the play. And this can be seen uh, especially in the uh, opening of the play where which, which again opens to, which, is an, which, which opens as an invocation to uh, the Lord Ganesha, right. So uh, here's the first quote uh, beginning with act one where there are 12 men standing in a line uh, singing, right, and Ganapati himself comes in, right, and uh, all the men who are standing on stage say they are swaying to and fro and they say Ganapati dances, the Ganapati dance. Brahmins of Pune bow and trance. Pious Brahmins keep on dancing. Holy Ganapati keep on dancing. Now let the drum beat. Now let the drum beat. Heaven, hell and earth complete. Heaven, hell and earth complete. Saraswati Devi, Goddess of Wisdom. After which Saraswati ends up uh, entering. She, en she enters dancing. And both Ganapati and Saraswati dance. Goddess of Wisdom, Wife of the Great One, Shri Ganaraya, image of good luck, even the mountains bow to your name. Play Saraswati, goddess of music. Come Lakshmi Devi, wife of the great one, bow to the good god. Both of you dance. Then Lakshmi comes in and dances with the two. Shri Ganaraya, now you must bless us. All that we ask for, success for this play. Blessed image, Moria. Ganapati Bappa, Moria. Blessed image, Ganapati Bappa. 
Right? So this is repeated, the tempo increases, it ends with Moria. Ganapati, Lakshmi and Saraswati go off stage. Right? So this is how it begins. It begins as a very traditional invocation to these three gods, uh, wishing for the success of the performance. Then you have a uh, Sutadhar who comes in and he asks the 12 men who form the wall to actually introduce themselves. And he asks them, these are all Brahmins from Pune, who are you? And one man says, I'm a Vedantic scholar, another one says, I'm a Vaidya doctor, a third one says, a logician, a fourth one, an astrologer, a fifth one, a linguist, a sixth one, a baron. So you can notice that, and they, all, and they come from different regions of uh, the country, Sringeri, Tanjo, Rameshwaram. Kumbakonam, Banaras, and so on. And, but, but they say we come from everywhere, but we are still all Pune people. So the Brahmins of Pune claim to form a very distinct identity of their own, right? And they believe in their own purity and the power, the fact that they all occupy very important uh, positions in court. So this is where it, this is how it begins, right? And you have a conversation between one of the Brahmins and the Sutadhar. And Sutadhar is a very clever man who actually manages to uh, weasel out some information from the Brahmins. And he realizes that they're all going to this place called the Bhavanakhani. Or the, Bhav the Bhavanakhani is a, uh, uh, you know, an area uh, where uh, courtesans and girls dance and sing. And probably also an allusion to the uh, brothels of uh, Pune, the red light district. And although the Brahmins have been sworn to secrecy, they're unable to actually uh, avoid or evade the Sutradha's uh, clever and cunning machinations. And they end up confessing that they're actually going to see women dance uh, at the and Bhavanakani, right? And that, of course, is a complete irony because it goes against their own uh, purity, their own uh, ritual purity and, uh, and superiority. Right. So, the Brahmin, of course, is strict into confessing uh, where he's going. And this is also a way of telling the audience uh, of exposing the irony, the corruption of the Brahmins to the audience. There's also going to be a dance, right? And there's going to, they're going, there's going to be a Lavani performance, an erotic love song, right? which is going to be performed. So, the entire function of the Sutradhar, right? And as long as this conversation is happening between the narrator and the Brahmins, you also have uh, songs and uh, being performed in the background. And so this is what the Sutradhar has to say. He says that night comes, Puna Brahmins go to Bhavanakhani. They go to Bhavanakhani. They go to the cemetery. They go to the Kirtan. They go to the temple, as they have done every day. The Brahmins go to Bhavanakhani. Ram Shiva Hari, Mukunda Murari, Radha Krishna Hari, the street of Bhavana became for a while the garden of Krishna. Right? So the, uh, the Mathura of Krishna becomes a, uh, a metaphor for the uh, Bhavana Khani that has been thronged by Brahmins who have come to watch uh, women uh, perform lavanis, erotic dance performances for them. And that again exposes the irony, the corruption of these Brahmins, the hypocrisy of these Brahmins who claim to be extremely pure and superior but at the same time indulge in these uh, erotic performances. Right? Again, there's a refrain. The Sutradhar constantly refrains certain, uh, the, uh, repeats certain lines in order to expose the irony and corruption of these uh, Brahmins. The Brahmins go to Bhavanakhani and the Brahmin wives stay at home. They stay at home. Oh, they stay at home. They wait. They cannot sleep. Do you know what's happening in, in Bhavanakhani in the house of Gulabi, Gulabi the courtesan? So that's a, com that's, that's a repeated refrain throughout the, uh, the uh, initial phase of Act 1 where the Sutadhar actually exposes the Brahmins for being lustful and ignoring the wives who stay at home. Right? They're all infatuated, besotted by Gulabi the courtesan. Right? The Brahmins have lost themselves in Bhavanakhani and the Brahmin women are at home. They stay at home. Oh yes, they stay at home. The Brahmins have lost themselves in the cemetery in Kirtan. The Brahmin women are sentenced to solitary confinement. Right? Even the Nana himself is besotted by Gulabi. And Gulabi is a very famous courtesan whose beauty seduces all these men. And it's in the midst of this dance performance that uh, Ghashiram meets the Nana who has come to watch Gulabi perform. And as uh, the Nana strips and falls, Ghashiram helps him for which he is rewarded with a pearl necklace. And this uh, creates resentment 
among the um, other Brahmins of Pune. He says in that altercation between Ghashram and the other Brahmins, the first soldier says, hey, who are you, Ghashram? I'm Ghashram Savaldas from Kanauj. Second soldier, go on, move aside. Why are you here, Ghashram? They are honoring Brahmins. There's a feast. First soldier, what does it have to do with you? Ghashram, I'm a Brahmin too. Second soldier, you a Brahmin? Where is your shaven head? Where is your holy thread? Where is your pious look? First soldier, where is your holy book? Recite the hierarchy of caste. Tell us, when did you last fast? Second soldier, looks like a thief. First soldier, looks like a scoundrel. Khashram, no, I am a Brahmin from Kanauj, new to Pune. Coming back from the ceremony, a Brahmin pats, pats the pocket of his shirt and suddenly yells, Thief! Thief! My pocket's been picked. My prize money is gone. It's gone. I'm lost. I'm dead. I'm drowned. Hubbub on the stage. Kashram is beaten. Kashram has been falsely accused by one of the Brahmins for stealing. Right? Soldiers drag Kashram fighting off the stage. Kashram yells, Let me see Nana Sahib. Take me to Nana Sahib. The Sahib comes to the festival and watches. The Brahmin complains to the Nana, saying that he has, uh, Kashram has stolen his prize money. And then finally, the actual thief is uh, discovered. And the Sahib says, the thief was someone else. I saw it. He was behind you at the ceremony and ran away with your money. Poor fellow. Ah, well, take this. I'm sorry, this is not the... Uh, um, this is actually the uh, English side, not the Nana side. There's also an Englishman, a British officer in the act, who uh, discovers the real thief and um, frees Ghashram from the accusation. Ghashram um, declares the, his intention for moving to Pune. He says, fortune came to find my fortune. Wife came to and my dear daughter. Because of them, God stopped the slaughter, but I'm not a thief. The Sutadhar says, maybe you are, maybe you are not. In this place, it matters not a jot. In this damn spot, we are in the same pot. I am a thief, you are a thief. Lie down easy, save yourself grief. The beds of stone, rest, easy. Don't moan. The bloody body rests well on gold stone. I speak from experience. So what the narrator is actually saying here is the fact that this is a place which is structured by corruption. Everyone is potentially guilty of something, right? No one is absolutely innocent. Nobody is an absolute victim. Even if they are, they're absolutely engaged, embroiled in some kind of conspiracy, right? So no one is absolutely free of corruption. Everyone, anyone can be potentially guilty. So he says again, I'm a thief. You're a thief. Our only hope is the mercy of the police. Your theft is their bribe. If their mercy ends, we end, so we bend. So there's no justice in Pune, right? Everyone is at the mercy of the police. If you can actually win the police's favor, then you are scot-free. You're left scot-free. Otherwise, you are a thief, right? You suffer. Kashram says, but I didn't steal. I swear to God I didn't. I'm not a thief. I'm from Kanauj. I'm a Brahmin. I've been here two weeks. I came here to find my fortune and lost my reputation. How did it happen? What will happen to my wife, to my daughter? What will they say when they hear of this? Right? So Ghashram is helpless when he's being accused of theft. Then this, the narrator says, friend, the thief is dependent on the police. If not, they'll soften your bones. Sometimes they break your bones. Sometimes they crack your bones. Sometimes you lose your life. The thief earns what he thieves. It's easy income for the police. It's a partnership. The thief is a simple thief. The, the police are official thieves. So the police are official thieves because they are always looking for bribes. If a thief wants to live, to the police he's got to give. You need protection money. And on top of that, their mercy might end any time. Right? So you're always at the mercy of the police. You never know when their mercy will end and you will actually be branded as a thief or behind jail. And so will you. You'll get kicks and blows. You'll see the cell. No one will know your address, Baba. That's how the play will end one day. No one will beep. No one will remember you, Baba. What's the use? One petty thief less in a world 
of big thieves. So, little servant, go to the feet of God. So the point is that everyone can be potential, potentially accused of theft, of having committed some crime in this uh, state of Pune. For as long as you have the favor of the police, you will be free of blame. But the moment you lose their favor, you will be accused of theft. And this, so he suggests that Gashram actually seek the favor of God, right? But it's not like as though religion or faith in God actually frees these people from corruption. Even religion itself is a corrupt institution, as we shall presently see. So the soldiers and the Brahmins together uh, humiliate Gashram. They want him to get out of, of Pune. But Gashram is determined to seek revenge. Right? So he says, but I'll come back. I'll come back to Pune. I'll show my strength. It will cost you. Your good days are gone. I am a Kanauj Brahmin. But I've become a Shudra, a criminal, a useless animal. There's no one to stop me now, to mock me, to make me bend, to cheat me. Now I'm a devil. You've made me an animal. I'll be a devil inside. I'll come back like a boar and I'll stay as a devil. I'll make pigs of all of you. I'll make this Puna a kingdom of pigs. Then I'll be Ghashram again, the son of Savaldas once more. So Ghashram does not actually end up uh, staying an innocent victim. He actually decides to take revenge and he realizes that this humiliation has made him very bitter and vengeful. And so he actually becomes worse than the people who have uh, abused and humiliated him. Then there's a long performance of uh, the Abhang and the Lavani and it's interesting because Abhang is a religious genre of, of uh, folk singing and music and Kirtan as opposed to the Lavani which is an erotic song and dance performance. So you see the two being juxtaposed in this act. And it's at this Abhang performance where uh, they are worshipping uh, Ganesha that the Nana discovers a young girl who is um, Gashram Kotwal's daughter, right, and her name is Gauri, right, and she's a young girl who's worshipping uh, the god, but uh, Nana is completely uh, overtaken by lust for this girl and he tries to seduce her. And when he makes sexual advances on the girl, the girl uh, tries to escape from him and uh, he ends up actually uh, grabbing the servant, the male servant instead. Right. So, uh, the, this very encounter, in fact, when the girl says, uh, accuses him uh, of actually trying to seduce her in, the, in front of the Lord Ganesha, uh, the Nana mockingly says, that idol of holiness, that holy Ganapati, the maker of good, look, he has two wives, one on this side, one on that side. If you sit on our lap, he won't say anything. So you again look at the mockery, the way he mocks at religion. Religion itself seems to fail to compel everyone, anyone. Right? So it, it's, uh, it kind of suggests that, that even the idol of Ganesha is a mere idol. Right? It does not command any faith, right? but it only seems to be a mere witness to uh, this uh, scene of violation. The girl says, you're like my father. Nana, only in age, but our devotion is only to this, only to, only to this graceful image. Don't lose any more time. Youth will not come again. The bloom will not last. My dear, you're like a daughter to us, someone else's. I'm afraid, the girl says. Right? So he tries to seduce the girl, but he actually ends up, uh, you know, um, uh, grabbing the male servant when the girl runs away like a frightened deer. So Nana in blind lust grabs the servant at the door. So this itself suggests the impotence of this man who, in his, who is completely blinded by his lust. He can't even recognize, he can't even distinguish a girl from his male servant. But the Nana is determined on getting Gauri because he's completely besotted and charmed by her beauty. And then he realizes that he is, that she is Gashram's daughter. Gashram uh, later on says, uh, now he's in my hands. And Gashram is very, very upset when he sees Nana trying to seduce his daughter. And Nana already has several wives. And Gashram suddenly cries out, saying, Now he's in my hands. Oh, my daughter, the beast. Oh, you people, look. I've given my beloved daughter into the jaws of that wolf. Look, look at this father. So this is when Gashram is very upset, but he cannot do anything about it. But he has a pact with Nana, where he exchanges his daughter for uh, the uh, 
for becoming the court wall of Pune. So even uh, Gauri becomes a mere scapegoat, a mere victim for Ghashram's own political uh, interests. Look at, my, look at this father. So he obviously regrets the fact that he has given his daughter uh, to this uh, man for his lust. Uh, putting the child of his heart up for sale. Look at my innocent daughter, a whore. That old overripe bastard. Look at him, eating her like a peach. Spit on me, stone me. Look, look, but I will not quit. I'll make this Pune a kingdom of pigs. Right? So he regrets the fact that he has given his daughter in exchange for his own political interests, for his own desire for revenge. Gashuram agrees to give his daughter only for a night. And then he realizes, uh, he tells uh, the, the Nana that he will take his daughter back and get her married to redeem her sexual stigma, but uh, in exchange for becoming the Kotwal of Pune, right? to which the Nana agrees. The Nana, towards the end of Act 1, says something very significant, significant, which again bears relevance to the hollowness of political power. The fact the entire play is really about how the people, right, the people, and are unable to recognize the true source of power. Right? It's all about the deputation of power. The entire play is about what it means to depute and delegate power to somebody else. But it's not like as though the people who have been deputed power with power are actually possess power. Right? So he says, um, now the Nana says towards the end, when he agrees to make the Ghashram the Kotwal, he says, go Ghashya, old bastard, we made you, we made you Kotwal. Raise hell if you wish, but you don't know the ways of this Nana. This time, there are two bullets in this gun. With the first one, we'll fell your luscious daughter. But with the second, we will make the city of Pune dance. Ghashya, child, you're a foreigner. I have put you on Pune's back. Why? As a counter check to all those conspirators, you will not be able to join them. They'll never trust you even if you do. So the Nana actually wants to use Ghashram Kotwal to keep the other powerful Brahmins of Pune at bay because he knows that Ghashram will never be entirely accepted by the Brahmins of Pune because he's an outsider. He's a foreigner that they will not trust. So the Ghashram is only a foil. He's only a veil for the Nana who is himself a deputation of the Chhatrapati, the uh, ruler of Pune. You'll not be able to join them. They'll never trust you even if you do. Because you're a stranger, you're an outsider. We just raised a dog at our, at our door to the position of the Kotwal. We are your sole support. Oh, you're a bastard, Ghashya. Your manner would be more arrogant than that of the Chitpavan Brahmins. You'll manage the deference nicely. You'll create a court and a half. No worry about that. You'll, you'll hap what will happen is that our misdeeds will be credited to your account. We do it. Our court will pays for it. The opportunity comes in the shape of Ghashiram. And that luscious speech is at hand to be devoured by Nana. Excellent. Yes, Ghashya, be court wall. This Nana blesses you. Right? What's the, the interesting significant line in Nana's dialogue is that when he says, what will happen is that our misdeeds will be credited to your account. Right? So you will be responsible for the misdeeds that we are committing. You are just a puppet in the hands of the Nana. Right? You don't wield any real power. You think you do, but you are just a puppet to which I pull the strings. Right? So you're just a deputation of my own power. So, but nobody in the play is actually able to identify the real source of power. They're only actually contending with these deputations of power. Right? Even, the, even Kashram himself believes that he is the most powerful uh, in the play, but he's not because towards the end, even he's stripped of power, even he's betrayed by the Nana. His daughter also is killed, right? she never comes back. And he is himself killed by the other Brahmins and the soldiers of the Nana towards uh, the end of Act 2. And in the beginning of Act 1, you see, you look at how um, Ghashram has actually converted the entire uh, state of Pune into a police state where no one has the freedom to do anything. Everyone is being persecuted for uh, the smallest uh, act of theirs, right? So the narrator again intervenes here to uh, describe to the audience um, uh, the uh, piteous, merciful, merciless state of, of, of Pune and uh, Ghashram Kotwal's tyrannical rule. Uh, so here you look at how Ghashram again has um, uh, reinstated certain rules uh, that 
for example, uh, prevent someone from eating with a lower caste person. That becomes a crime, right? Someone who commits adultery is punished. Right? Someone who consumes alcohol or liquor is again being um, um, punished. Right? So the Sutra says, Gashram Kotwal says, to kill a pig, to do an abortion, to be a pimp, to commit a misde misdemeanor, to steal, to live with one's divorced wife, to remarry if one's husband is alive, to hide one's caste, to use counterfeit coins, to commit suicide without a permit is a sin. A good woman may not prostitute herself, a Brahmin may not sin without a permit. Right? So it's completely, uh, you know, all of uh, Ghashiram's rules uh, and uh, regulations completely forbid uh, all these things to be a pimp, to create any kind of social and moral misdemeanor. Right? To, you can't even commit suicide without a permit. Everyone stays at home. People are actually even scared to occupy the streets of the of the town because they're scared that they may be punished. The prostitute's lane, even prostitution has been banned. The prostitute's lane was desolate. The chasing of women, women was halted. Pimps turned into beggars. Counterfeit coins were worthless. So all forms of corruption, right, are completely banned. This also includes prostitution, this also includes counterfeit coins, this includes uh, divo uh, you know, divorce, this includes uh, adultery, this includes uh, you know, hiding one's caste. Right? So it's a proper regulation of a police state. So several instances in the beginning of Act 2 where you have Gashram going to every house and uh, trying to find out if, uh, if anybody is responsible of any crime. So he, he, he very often uh, persecutes, uh, interrogates men who may have committed adultery or who may have uh, tried to divorce their wives, who probably consume alcohol, who visit prostitutes. Um, the, very often he also asks for proof of marriage. He is not sure if a man and a woman who are actually cohabiting or living together are actually married. So he wants proof of marriage. And the commentator, the, the narrator, often comments on the, power, the source of uh, Ghashram's power. Behind Ghashram Kotwal is Nana's power. If you lay a hand on Ghashram, Nana will smash you. If you don't, then Ghashram will get you anyway. Right? So this is what he says. And the Ghashram himself says, If anyone is seen, th seen throwing power at anyone, powder at anyone but his wife, bind his hands. Morality must be protected. Take away the Brahmins who are having too good a time. Just a little fun without any vulgarity is all right. Keep a sharp ear out. Keep a sharp eye out. Demand permits. You have permits for everything. Moral permits. You need to have a moral sanction for anything that you do. Ghashram is very proud when he has managed to quash uh, the Brahminical power of Pune. He says, I've got the Kotwali and I've got Pune straightened out. All these hard, proud Brahmins are soft as cotton now. No one dares to look Ghashram straight in the eye. Now, once I find a fitting husband for my darling daughter, that piece of my heart named Lalita Gauri, and get her married, then everything will be the way I want it. I'll make such a show of the wedding that no one's tongue will dare utter one bad word about my daughter. And if some tongue starts wagging, it's easy to cut it off. Now first, I look for a bridegroom. It's easy to find a bridegroom when one has money, jewels and respect. And my daughter's beautiful one in a million. Right? So he decides to get his daughter married. But then he discovers from the narrator that the Nana is getting married and he wonders if the uh, woman that he's getting married to is actually Gauri. But Gauri is nowhere to be found. Right? So we realize that Gauri is actually missing and later we discover that she's actually uh, been killed. The commentator, the Sutadhar, the narrator says, uh, my Nana's wedding the bride's a young one, my nana's wedding, a tender blossoming bride, a slender willowy bride, a, sh a shy lily white bride, a just this year ripened bride, my nana's wedding. So we all imagine that it might be Gauri, but it's not. The guests arrive, the pavilion rises, the jewels are brought with all due ceremony, the trumpets sound, my nana's wedding, just ripe this year, my nana's wedding. Let's go to the wedding. Let's go to the wedding. Let's go to the wedding. Sakubai, Salubai, Kalubai, Saibai. Let's go to the wedding. The Peshwa's chief minister, still young enough to marry. His mustache has turned grey, but not all his teeth are gone. Not all of them are gone. He's got six wives. Look, that's not enough. So he's got a new one. 
She needs a companion. So, Sakubai, Salubai, Kalubai, Saibai. Let's go to the wedding. Right? So, this is the common, the common refrain of the narrator uh, just before the Nana's wedding to another young girl. And Gashram is desperate. He wants to know what happened to his daughter. And so he goes and asks uh, Nana, the Nana what happened to his daughter. And then the Nana is absolutely indifferent. She, he says she might be, although initially he's startled and scared to see Gashram, but then he's very indifferent. And he says, she might be, she might be anywhere. I haven't seen her. I was busy with the wedding. So he's absolutely indifferent. And then Gashram realizes that uh, she has been uh, murdered. And the Nana says, she, she, she went to Chandra, the midwife. right? And here there's an impression that perhaps the daughter has been impregnated by the Nana. So he goes to uh, Chandra right? and Chandra uh, does not know what happened to Gauri and he realizes that Nana is the one who has responsible for uh, Gauri's death. And, but even at this point when Gashram is is remorseful and he, he, he laments the loss of his daughter. He's unable to actually resist the Nana's power. Nana says, are you mad, you fool, Ghashya child? These hands have never killed even an insect. In these hands is only the flute of Lord Krishna, which made the gopis forget hunger and thirst. And you should think before you accuse the Peshwa's chief minister. Are you thinking clearly, Ghashya? To whom do you speak with such insubordination? The Peshwa's chief minister stands before you, Ghashya. Right? So, Kashram is unable to resist, is unable to actually uh, argue or fight with Nana because he realizes that the Nana is the deputy of the Peshwa. And what's interesting is that the Peshwa actually never appears in the play. He remains this absolutely anonymous uh, but all pervasive source of power, which is only embodied in the form of the Nana. वाईट वाटून घेशील रे घाशी आता शांत हो बरे काही झाले तरी रीत सुटता कामाने ती विसरू नये कुणा समोर उभा आहे प्रथम मुजरा करावा कर बरे मुजरा कर शाबास तुझी स्वामी निष्ठा करते आम्हास आमच्या कृपेने कोतवाल पदावर चढलास आनंदच वाटतो आम्हास तुझ्या वरील प्रसंग आम्हा समजतो घाशी अरे हा तुझा भ्रम दुसरे काय घडवणारा तो वरचा सर्व भरचा आपण निमित्त मात्र बस दुसरे काय बैस घाशी आम्ही तुझे सांत्वन करतो तो मांग बसा देऊ 
तुमने मेरे अकेले बेटी को जान लिया मेरी पहली मासूम अकेले बेटी को तुमने मारा अरे भेड़ का खूड़ चांडा रहा या हता ने कभी कीड़ मुंगी सुधा न सेल मार ली या हता सदा कृष्णा ची मुरली जिन्हें गोपीन ची तहान भू कर ली अरे पेशवान चा प्रधान और आरोप करने पूर्वी जरा विचार करावा माथे ठिकाने आए ना तुझे उड़ा समर करतो उस बेहद बीची भाषा पेशवान सा प्रधान तुझा समर उबाए घाशा अरे कहाँ है सरका नाना साब नाना साब करतो उस हाले गेले जाऊँगा विसु गंगे गेले विसु गतम न सोच वेदस मना लिया है शेवटी आपन तरी कुठे राणा राहो बाबा आपन सुधा सगले जाना राहो हाँ देह मंजे माती है माती नाही शाश्वती जो आला तो जाना और शेवटी राख रुना और चार चिंता ती होती हाँ देखिल ब्रह्म ही माया जलार ही काया गौरी नाही ही सुधा माया मरण सुधा मिथ्या है घाशा जीवन सुधा मिथ्या है कुनी नहीं कुना से नहीं कुनी कुना ची बेटी नहीं कुनी कुना सा बाप शेवटी आपले हैं आप झगड़े मंजे नाटक चार दिसांस आपन आपले कर्म करित रहे से मैं प्रधान तू कोतवाल पाला भी आप आपली साल ये आपले कर्म तो जा आता कामास जा फार मोठी जोखी माहे बाबा तुझा वर अवग्या पुण्या ची जिम्मे दारी तुझा ये त्या वर खाशी अमी खूश आहोत निहा ये तुझा वर तर जा अता कामास जा आमी ही जात जान्या पुर्वी मुझरा करन्या स्ते उड़ा चुकून कोस आणी हो जाले त्या बदल नको गवगवा उ तुझे आब्रू ती आमचे आब्रू तुझा आप तर आमचा रुबाप पेश्वेंचा कोतवाला बदल कोणी बोलने भलते सलते मंजा ब्रमंडे मस्ते तेवा कोठे वाच्चतन होई याची चोक खबरदारी खेतली जावी कोणी लागले बोलू नको मागे पोडे पाहू चाट शीर नको उशीर पे तर जा अता कामास जा राहिला केलास घोटाला मुझरा राहिला चांडाला शाबास असावे चोख असा कसारे तू बिंडोक जा गौरीचा मुर्दा हलून ताबड़तो अपना दित फेका हार जरी कोणास गावले तर मोड़तील तुमचे हडे सा Then, then Anna says, uh, so when, when Ghashram actually uh, laments his daughter's loss, he says, um, Oh now, what's this Nana Sahib, Nana Sahib? Let's forget what's happened. All merges into the Ganga. Thou shalt not grieve over what is gone. The Vedas have said that. After all, Ghasha, will we live forever? We too, every one of us will leave Ghasha. This body is earth, just dirt. You cannot rely upon it. What comes, goes. Four handfuls of ash remain. It is a misapprehension to think that she was here. It was illusion. 
the body will burn. It is misapprehension to think that she is no longer here. Death is without meaning, Kasha. Life too is without meaning. It's interesting that the playwright has given Nana such philosophical lines about the uh, impermanence of the body, that death has no meaning whatsoever. No one is anyone's daughter. And this is true because in the state of Pune, in the state of irredeemable corruption, no one belongs to anyone. There is no justice. Right? There are no ethics. No one is anyone's father. In the end, only oneself belongs to oneself. Life is a dance of four days charm. So one is forced to be selfish. One has to be ruthless. In this play of power, there is no space for bonds. There's no space for belonging. There's no place for intimacy and love. That's enough. I'm the chief minister. You are the court wall. These are our duties. So go, go to your du go do your go to your duty. This is a given trust given to you, Jagdhasha. The responsibility of all Pune is yours alone, Gasha. We're very pleased with you. Go, go to your work. We also go, and so on. And this makes the court wall all the more ruthless. He goes around beating and killing people of Pune, right? And there's no remorse whatsoever. And this is when, towards the end of the play, the Gashram himself is, uh, is uh, in some sense, uh, he, uh, beaten up and, and killed by the other people of Pune. Towards the end of the play, Gashram says that uh, he has, his uh, position as Kotwal has been uh, cancelled by the Nana right, at the request of the Brahmins. And he, the Nana has also ordered for the Ghashram's execution. And towards the end, Ghashram says, Hit me, beat me. Beat me some more, hit me. Why stay so far away? Come on, you cowards. Still scared? I spit on you. Beat me. Come on, beat me. Come on, come on. Stone me, cowards. Big shit. Come on and beat me. I dare you. Hit me. Look, one of my hands is tied. And you're scared. Come on, beat me. Crush me. The mob yells, Kashram Savaldas, Kashram Savaldas, I danced on your chest, but I wasted the life of my little daughter. I should be punished for my death, for the death of my daughter. Beat me, beat me, hit me, cut off my hands and feet, cut my skull. Come on, come on, look, I'm here. Oh, that's very good, good, very good. The Nana says, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Pune, a threat to the great city of Pune has been ended today. A disease has been controlled. Right, so after Ghasham has been killed, uh, beaten up and killed by the mob, he says, a disease has been controlled. The demon Ghashya Kotwal, who plagued all of us, has met his death. Everything has happened according to the wishes of the gods. The mercy of the gods is always with us. Let the corpse of sinful Ghashya rot. Let the wolves and dogs have it. Let the worms have it. Whoever attempts to take away this corpse will be punished. Whoever mourns for him will be hanged. So in this public execution of Ghashya becomes a... Uh, a warning to anybody else who wishes to actually transgress the, uh, the power or challenge the power of the Nana and the Peshwa. All living relatives of Ghashya Savaldas will be found, bound and expelled from the city. So the city does not tolerate any kind of transgression, uh, any kind of challenge to uh, the rule of the state. We will order, we, will, we have ordered that from this day on forward, not a word, not a stone relating to the sinner shall survive. We have commanded that there be festivities for three days to mark this happy occasion. It actually ends on a dance with uh, and, a, and an invocation with to Ganapati. So you look at, you also see how religion in some sense is not uh, in some sense uh, a actual uh, ritual force, but uh, uh, an abstraction uh, of awe right? uh, rather than a material force. In some sense, it, it, it reinforces the caste dominance of Pune, the Brahminical dominance of Pune, and the way uh, people of belonging to other castes are humiliated and divided right, in their opposition to uh, the Brahminical force. And as to end with a quotation by Shomik Bandupade, he says that, like ceremony, both religious and secular, the deceptions of deputation, we talked about how the deputation of power is deceptive. We don't really know the real source of power. Everyone only wears, wears a mask of power. Right? Like ceremony, both religion, religious and secular, the deceptions of deputation constitute yet another device of power. The real power uses the masks of deputation to mediate the exercise of power, to hide from the victims the real face of power, so that all resistance is effectively deflected. 
intermediate democratic institutions or the paraphernalia of bureaucracy, too often regarded as repositories of at least executive power, are more often than not masks or mediations that veil the actual exercise of power and hide the perpetrator from the eyes of the victim. Right? So you don't really know the, the real perpetrator of this power and violence. Even as Ghashram, fool that he is, thinks that the Kotwali will mean power in his hands, Nana knows, quote, what will happen is that our misdeeds will be credited to your account. Right? So it's not like as the, the Ghashram himself possesses absolute power, but he himself is just a veil for the Nana's real power. He's just a, a, a derivation, a, a secondary derivative of the Nana's power. What is also important is that in the process of trying to kill Ghashiram, right, stoning uh, Ghashiram to death, uh, it's also important to, to realize that this is not the end of uh, people like Ghashiram, right? because there will always be people who will try and rebel and transgress. There will always be uh, new Ghashirams that emerge, new people who are uh, greedy for power and are corrupted by it. And by the end, uh, it becomes clear that no one is actually innocent of corruption. Anyone who actually acquires power becomes corrupt and becomes more tyrannical than the people they oppose. Right? So in some sense, this uh, play is a very uh, com contemporary commentary on the, on the corrupting uh, effects and impact of power of certain institutional forms of power like uh, the court, like the police, or like religion, right? the priesthood. Right? So, so it's, it's very clear that, that, uh, that this, this play, in the, in the world of this play, no one is, uh, is redeemed or redeemable because um, it's a ruthless uh, pursuit of power um, and everyone becomes a mere deputation of power right? and assume or believe that they actually possess power but no one does. Right? It's, it's, a, it's a structure, it's a complete structure of power where no one, everyone believes that they possess power but they're just mere deputies of power and, and everyone is deceived into thinking that they actually possess power. So it's, 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 and so anyone who is a victim of uh, this structural problem of power and corruption uh, becomes uh, uh, more tyrannical than the structure that they oppose. So they actually draw from the structure that itself and they end up becoming more tyrannical than uh, the uh, structure itself. So, so they, 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 f they forget to realize that they're actually a product of the very structure, of the very forces that they oppose. Thank you.